the tow truck just left and they delivered a 2008 Suzuki XL7 and I understand that the uh oh that's cool I understand that it does not start so let's get to the bottom of this right now okay Zuki let's see what it does got it does not start I fixed it I gave it the touch Ray strikes again. Woohoo! Oh crap. I need to quit my job. I just referred to myself in the third person. That's not good. Let's see if it starts again. Sure does. Starts again. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the well and talk to the service advisors and see uh, see what the complaint is. Or what what's going on, because uh, based on the complaint of vehicle does not start, I don't have much to go off of. I don't even have a check engine light. Cool. All right, third time's a charm. And it starts. All right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go bring this into my stall, get out of the sunlight. Okay, well it moves. Hmm. Unable to duplicate customer concern at this time. Three tenths. <laughs> Dealership joke. All right, my service manager is on the phone with somebody else, so I'll check back in with them later. Uh, what I think happened, and this used to be common with the old Chevy trucks, is the fuel pump would lock up on them and they, they would crank and crank and not ever run. Then they'd stick it on a tow truck and then all that jostling and moving around, it would free up the fuel pump again, or you go underneath of it and tap it with a mallet. That would free up the pump, the pump would run again, and then you'd go to key it on and the thing would work. So I'm just, I'm speculating at this point, but, uh, you know, based on kind of what I've observed so far and past experience, I would venture a guess that this, this car has a faulty fuel pump. But uh, like I said, I'm gonna go wait for her to get off the phone and collect some more info to, uh, to see what the deal is. And seeing as how step one of every single diagnostic process known to man is uh, check battery and battery connections and make sure that stuff is clean and tight, I'm going to do that. However, the hood won't stay up, so I need to, need to resolve that problem first. Up, uh. There we go. And up there in that hole, that should, uh, that'll keep my noggin safe. Let's see where this battery is. It's under the PCM. Uh-oh, somebody shorted this. Oops. Yeah, it's got a new battery in it, so it appears that somebody has attempted to resolve this issue. Now that I've determined that the battery is connected and in good condition, that was a brand new battery, I will uh, apply the scan tool to attempt to diagnose this with uh, trouble codes. Oh, getting somewhere. That all showed up. There's a battery light on. Oh, another light. Hmm, okay. Oh no, I missed it. It, uh, it shut down. Huh, okay. Now it's doing something. It was actually running. This is weird, all right. Yeah, the starter's clicking on it. I hear that. There's there's some kind of electrical problem going on here. Wait a second, I need to back up. I did not verify that this battery was fully charged and in good condition. I just noticed that it was new and decided that it was good because it started. I better check that for voltage. Okay, that one goes on the negatory. Hmm. Minimal voltage present. All right. Well, whatever's in there is not enough to turn on this test light, and that's about seven volts. Let's get the meter. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, 10 volts? Yeah, it's not enough volts. Not enough at all, okay. Time to add some auxiliary electrons. And yeah, that's positive. Okay. Powering on, good. Let's go see if it starts. Nope, same clicky kind of deal. Yeah, it does not appear to be. Yeah, it seems to have power. It's got AC fan. Let's see the windows. I don't even know if they work. Maybe. Okay. Okay, well, after that attempt, it appears that this jumper box is also dead. Okay, no more screwing around. I'm gonna really get some power into this thing now. Yeah, you go there. Okay, let's see, we need maximum power. Start, charge, and let's see how many amps it's taking. That's not good when this goes into reconditioning. All right, well, I'm gonna let this thing do its thing. I'll check back later in 15, 20 minutes and then see what the state of charge is at that point. And uh, then we can try to start this again and see what's going on. Okay, the charger has finished its reconditioning phase and it's starting to feed some current, some amperage into the battery. It's only delivering just over two amps right now due to the low voltage condition of the battery. But as soon as the, that voltage starts to climb a little bit, it'll begin to feed it more and more current. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. The current intake is almost up to 28 amps. Let's see what uh, current voltage is at. Yeah, just over 13. Okay, that's I mean, we should have enough in here to try to start this thing again. This has been charging for about 40 minutes. Alrighty, here goes nothing cranking. Yep. And it starts and runs, so we have an electrical problem. Service battery charging system. I bet you there is no uh, no nader action going on here. Okay, I've gone through and did an all system scan on all the modules and everything's full of uh, low voltage codes. Voltage low, voltage low. Yeah, everything, most of this is uh, voltage codes. Uh, what I'm gonna do is fix this charging system issue. I will clear all these trouble codes and then rescan it to see if anything, uh, anything else is going on with this. But I believe their primary concern is gonna be the, the charging system issue, so I'm gonna tackle that first. And with the charger disconnected and turned off, Let's see what kind of voltage is present at the battery now. Did it work out? Yeah, 11.6 volts. This thing has a failed meter. All right, let's gain some access here and see what we're looking at. Okay, I need to backtrack my assumptions one more time. This alternator looks fairly newish, kind of. It's been replaced before. I'm seeing here Let's see if I get some light on this properly. All right, so way down there at the cable, that thing's pretty chowdered up. And I think the eyelid is broken because I was able to move that wire back and forth with a lot of, uh, it was, well, it was ease, a lot of ease. All right, so I found that this alternator comes on and off as it pleases. Uh, right now it's at an off time. It's uh, not producing any voltage. So there's just battery voltage left over here. Uh, I did a visual inspection. I found I've got the correct signal and ground wire from the PCM connector. But that large uh, power supply wire that runs down to the starter then over here to the battery and to the, the fuse box, the, uh, the eyelet on it, I believe, is cracked and broken off. I was able to move that wire very easily. And I see like a bunch of burning looking stuff around the, uh, around the output post on the alternator. I believe they left that loose when this alternator was installed because this is not a, not the original one. This thing has been replaced fairly recently-ish, I'd say within a year. I think what had happened is that thing wasn't connected all the way, that, uh, that power cable, and it was causing arcing between the cable and the, uh, the output post on the alternator, which uh, could have caused the alternator to uh, burn up from trying to produce too much current when uh, when there was a poor connection that was made. So uh, based on the condition of everything I see here, I'm gonna recommend we replace the alternator. 
Alrighty, so I got the authorization to go ahead and replace this alternator. Yeah, hang on, we'll get this part. All right, with that, uh, that air box out of the way, we can see where the flashlight's blinding the camera. You can see the front of the alternator right here. It's got this really weird engine mount thing going on with a, uh, a shock absorber dampener attached to it. I'm pretty certain I'm gonna have to remove this pulley right here because the alternator bolt should be right behind it. And uh, then I can probably, uh, I'll have to remove this bracket too and then just go ahead and sneak the whole unit out right through here, I think. I might have to go backwards with it and go out through here between the fan and the cylinder head, but uh, I'll try this this direction first. So let's see let's see how this works out. For starters, let's get this mount thing out of the way. There's a nut. Okay. I believe this is the right course of action because there are witness marks all over these bolts. Meaning somebody has already been here probably when they replaced this alternator the last time. This uh, belt tensioner runs off of a half inch drive, but my half inch wrenches are too big, so I, I'm actually going to use my, uh, my belt tensioner tool. There we go. Not much throw, look at that. that out of the way and yeah the this pulley bolt is the bolt for this alternator so this thing's definitely gonna have to have to come off and 15 millimeters it is yep come on almost there Man, I'm running out of room. Look at that. This is right up against the part of the body. And I am out of room. It doesn't it doesn't come out all the way. Okay, I'll just leave that there for now. I, I think it's past the threads. But it's not gonna come out. Yeah, I'll just get the other two bolts out first and then I'll wiggle this thing at an angle and then pull that back out. Okay, I've already got the battery disconnected. Now I want to get this um, this cable off of the alternator. But it's pretty crusty, and I believe that was our failure point to begin with. And I don't think that the bolt's turning. I think that the stuff is turning in the alternator itself. I'm going to keep working it to try to get it apart, but I may have to cut the cable off. We'll see. Yeah, it doesn't feel like the bolts or the nut is turning. It feels like the stud itself is, and it broke right off. There we go. Look at that. Yep, snapped it right off clean. I knew that's where the problem was. And here's the recovered stud. Yeah, I don't know what all this buildup is in here. I, I think that they had left that loose and it just arced and arced and arced until it kind of welded itself together. 
Either way, it's apart now. So it's two more 15 millimeter bolts between me and the liberation of this defective nader. Okay. Little mini ratcheting finger wrench. Works great in those, uh, those toy places. It's almost out. Come on. This is the harder one to reach, so I'm taking this one out first. The, uh, I always save the easiest bolt for last. That way I can manipulate the component around or, uh, you know, once it starts to come free and the weight ends up sitting on the fastener, it makes it less difficult to remove. And reverse click, there we go. I think the service manual says I'm supposed to remove this coolant hose right here. But if I can avoid doing that, I will because I don't want to I don't want to tap into a cooling system. So then I gotta deal with the fluids and refilling them and whatnot. It's almost out. Come on. Oh, it's getting kind of tight. There it goes. Take some weight off of it. Okay, it's it's free. Ish. Now for that sketchy part, getting that uh, pulley and bolt out of there. Let's see how this is gonna go. So I think what I'll do is just uh, angle this. Don't drop it, Ray. Just angle it up some, and then I can pull pull that out as an assembly. There we go. Now I believe I can squeeze this nader through this little hole right here. Shit, no, wrong. It's not coming this way. No, no, I gotta go the other way with it. Let's try over here. Maybe? Yeah, it'll come out through here. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, no, it won't. Let's take these wires out of the way. Let's try to pull it up. Come out, Devil Nader. It's got these clips on this radiator shroud thing, this fan shroud, that don't do anything. I'm tempted to cut them off, but I don't like to do things like that. Not if I can, if I can help it. Oh, you're coming out of there. You're gonna come out. Here it comes. Gotcha. All right, folks. I hate to do this to you, but I had to split this one up into two parts and make this first part a cliffhanger episode. But have no fear. I already have part two ready to go. If you wait for the end screen or check for the links in the video description, it will take you over to part two. As always, I'd like to thank everybody for watching, and of course, I need to remind everyone here to not forget to have a great day.